Could, could you tell us, I mean, how do you or government agencies monitor their policies to the extent that they know that it's having the desired result? Take, for instance, uh, if it reflects on the cost of food items. They're not coming down. They're going up. Well, you see, the cost of food items is a structural problem. And the structural problem is caused by one thing. We import food. Now, if you import food and then your exchange rate changes, you get food price inflation. Now, what has this government said about that? We have to grow our own food. We have to eat our own food. We need to increase agricultural production so that we can bring down the cost of food. Now, if, when you're in this situation, there are two things you can do. You can, as a government, do a program and go out and mass, do mass importation of food and bring down the price artificially. But if you do that, you then kill your agricultural sector. What we said was, rather than do that, why don't we invest heavily in agriculture and try and bring down the price of food in a sustainable manner that creates value for Nigerians? And you can see, if you go to Kebi, if you go to Ebonyi, and a number of states where they've now started massively growing rice, if you, you know, the harvest and the work that Chief Aldo Obe is doing in terms of increasing our productivity in the agricultural sector is beginning to pay off. We're coming into the harvest. I'm told harvest season is is, is um, imminent, and we'll see prices come down. Uh, the price of corn had gone skyrocketed. Uh, it's come back down now because it takes just 12 weeks to grow corn. It takes 12 weeks to grow rice. So why don't we invest on, in production, which can create jobs for Nigerians, instead of doing sort of artificial uh, adjustments to the food price. The truth is, for a country of 170 million people, we cannot afford to be looking for dollars before we eat. We, it, it just doesn't make any sense. We have land, we have people that are, are, are available to work. We cannot be looking into the foreign exchange market before we eat. We've got to produce our own food. It's fundamental for a country of our size. We can't be import dependent for food. Mm. And that's what I think this inflation has taught us, that when you import food, when you then have a problem with your exchange rate, straight away it hits everybody in the pocket. Quite a number of people who have responded want to know how it is that people get on the social register. Um, I believe that this is being coordinated through the office of the vice president, through Mrs. Uwais. It's at each local government uh, level that they're actually um, compiling these lists of the poorest people. Because, of course, it has to be bottom up. It can't be uh, top down. So they're going out, they're doing these assessments of sort of widows and disabled people and people who really are at the bottom of the rung. And it's being done at local government level. Okay, so we are sure that the register is going to be... They're, they're working. ...is going to be uh, fraud-proof? You can never be sure that anything's going to be fraud-proof, but you have to build controls that make sure that if people do attempt fraud, we will identify it very quickly and deal with it very, very quickly. This is money for the poorest, uh, and we, will be, we are building in the anti-fraud uh, procedures, and that's why NIBS, who run the um, BVN are actually being involved. They're capturing the biometric data of the recipients and the money is going directly to the recipients. Only recently, I think uh, the president uh, had a retreat, as it were, uh, with ministers and he talked about thinking out of the box. What are some of the thinkings uh, that have currently come out from that particular retreat that will, we can say are truly out of the box? Well, I, I think that... Um, because of where we are, it, it's a problem and it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity to think the unthinkable. There's, you know, there think, there's nothing now that, you, we, that is off the cards. There's no, there's no strategy that people say, no, 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 we can't do that now. So I think that's where the president was, was pushing us to. One of the things I think is very, came out of that retreat that was very clear was the need for better coordination and that you know, we need to break down some of these silos. And some of the things that have, have happened since then is just people getting together. You know, BPE, ICRC, sit down with the Ministry of Finance in a room. It doesn't have to be formal. What is the problem? What are the issues? What's slowing us down on this transaction? And actually engaging. And sometimes we discover it's, it's one rule or it's one director that's sitting on something for, for longer than they need to. So we're unplugging some of the, these bottlenecks. I think the out-of-the-box thinking, really, for me, is around where can Nigeria go? What can we do with this economy? What, what can we take this difficult period? What, what advantages can we take in this difficult period to do? And I think one of the things is government getting out of certain things and allowing the private sector to come in, as we're doing in transportation, and, and looking at doing in other areas uh, like refineries and the oil and gas sector. Let me come in here again, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, we speak to Nigerians and we speak... Uh, and gauge their, their, their thinking almost uh, on a daily basis. And uh, you have said uh, so much, but it would seem as if uh, what the government is doing when you told us about cutting costs uh, is uh, 
with the intangibles, I mean, uh, about program of events, and uh, maybe perhaps t-shirts or people who work on people somewhere. These are small spendings. Nigerians will love to see the big cut uh, in so many things that is going on or that are going on in the country. And we'll get to see that. For our AFC, you did say yes, we will speak with them. We're trying to get them at this moment. We're, we're still trying. But they are very critical in helping us now that we are in a recession. One would have thought that being an, a commission of government, they should be in the talks with the economic team and see how they can rejig and put things to paper so that as the National Assembly come out of recess, they also will be speaking with the National Assembly. It doesn't look like we are in any kind of emergency or recession, are we? I'm not sure. What's your question? What's the question? Because, uh, I, I, yeah. yeah uh, let, let me come again. The question is that the spendings of government and things that you did say they have cut cost on as something that Nigerians will call intangibles. You told us about program of events, that the leaflets have been reduced to one. But Nigerians are asking about the big spendings, which still hasn't actually been done. We're talking about people who go on entourage, even if it is possible okay. to receive the well, president at the UN General Assembly. Now that we are in a recession, we should do the needful and really, really reduce those that will be going on that event. And it also goes down to the RMAFC. People still haven't heard anything from a commission that is also owned by the government at the center. Okay. Um, I can't speak to the uh, uh, UN General Assembly entourage beyond what I've spoken. And I've explained that even I was due to be there and I'm here today. And there are a number of ministers that were told, step down, you don't need to be there. So I think the president has been very clear in signaling a very lean uh, entourage. I don't know the, the actual number. I think you probably are p more privy to that than I am. Um, to your point that uh, some of the cuts that we're referring to are very small, I would respectfully disagree with you. Um, we spent 4.6 billion naira last year on printing. Um, so they're, they're, they're not small items. Uh, we spent 46 billion travelling. So that they're, they're not small items. We are, we are addressing the big items. The biggest item of government expenditure, as you know, is wages and salaries. And you know the efforts we have made at cleaning up our payroll and reducing that monthly burden from 165 billion, which we inherited, it's now down to 159, and it's dropping daily from the initiatives that we're doing. So we are attacking the big items as well as the small items. Um, I, I think that, that to your point on RAMFAC, I, I'm really not in a position to speak to exactly what RAMFAC are doing, uh, but I can only tell you what I know, which is that we are engaging fully on trying to bring down the cost of governments in every area. Mm. Well, you talked about coordination as one of the areas where the, uh, the president was talking about when he, he talked about thinking out of the box. Mm. Now, some people will say that that was one of the reasons why in the last administration they had a coordinating minister for the economy. Mm. Do you think that the government might be looking at, you know, giving a role to someone to coordinate some aspects of the economy, especially now that we're in a recession? Well, I think that, that, that role is being played by the vice president who chairs the economic um, management team. And I think we shouldn't be fixated by titles. You know, if you call something a coordinating minister or coordinating um, uh, uh, vice president, it's not the title, it's the effect. Um, if you coordinate a mini an econ economy but you didn't have an MPC included, and an MPC represents 70% of the economy, where's the coordination? Because if there was coordination, I would tell you that the cash call arrears of about $7 billion would not have arisen. Uh, they weren't even documented. We just, one of the problems we are now having today is that when the oil price was high, as high as $110 a barrel, government N under NMPC was not paying cash calls to the IOCs. So what's now happened is those arrears have built up, and now that the price is at its lowest, the IOCs have said, look, we need the cash calls to be met. And let me get, let, no, no, please, let me give you an example of the impact, because it's very important. Today is fact. Um, we are getting, I believe, $46 billion from NMPC this month to, towards FAC but they've taken 110 billion for cash calls. At a time when really we need that money to be spent in the economy, we are paying the arrears of cash calls from the past. So coordination is not a title, coordination is what we're doing. Where is the coordination happening now? Now, NMPC come, 
monthly. We have a reconciliation meeting with them, with RAMFAC. We see the numbers. Those numbers were not visible before. So there's far more coordination going on now in real terms. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't get fixated with titles. I'm very um, fixated with what is actually happening. And what's happening at the moment is we have visibility of NMPC's Which numbers that wasn't there before. Is the CBN a part of the president's e economic of course management they are. team? Yes, they so are. do you think that you have any influence on what exactly the MPC will be able to decide? We, we don't because, as you know, un under the law, the, the, the Central Bank of Nigeria are fully independent of the Ministry of Finance. But I think... Uh, influence uh, will be extended in terms of the debate and the engagement and we do talk to them around look this is the macro framework this is what we see we don't know what you're seeing because you see money supply you see interest rate you see bank credit you're responsible for monetary policy but from a fiscal perspective this is what we see and this is what we require and of course the central bank governor sits in that in that um, how soon do you think we're coming out of this it's difficult to predict. What I do think is that um, there, there are different types of, of recession and there's what they call the U-curve recession where, you know, you go down, it's almost like a U and then, and then you come up. You, you, you ride along the bottom a little and then you begin to come up. We seen, we're seeing some very positive signs. I, I spoke about the FAC. This month, uh, FAC is about just under 500 billion. The majority of that money is from FIRS tax. That was a strategy we set out. We said, look, we need to improve our revenues. We want to be less dependent on oil. So this month when oil is actually low, we're just getting 46 billion from them. We're getting over, uh, we're getting close to 300 billion from taxes. On so some of our strategy is working and there's, there's we, hope. We have to go now. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily. We've been speaking to the Minister for Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshung. Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Do join us again.